now we are moving to uh, part three this is uh, Cambridge IELTS eight listening three. test Cambridge IELTS eight listening test one section three Se okay in the section three. three we have MCQs you will hear a student called Sandra talking to her tutor about a draft proposal she has written for a competition. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. 21 to 24, quickly. Uh, the tutor thinks that the Sandra's proposal Kya karne chahi? should be reordered, needs content page, or to include. The proposal would be easier if Sandra follows. Okay. Then, what was the problem with the formatting on the Sandra's proposal? Okay, formatting me kya issue tha and then Sandra became interested in visiting the Ramjo National Park. Usko kahan se interest develop hua? Okay, these are the four questions. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Question 21. Answer the following questions. Right, Sandra. You wanted to see me to get some feedback on your group's proposal. The one you're submitting for the Geography Society Field Trip Competition. Uh-huh. I've had a look through your proposal, and I think it's a really good choice. In fact, I only have a few things to say about it, but even in an outline document like this, you really have to be careful to avoid typos and problems with layout in the proposal, and even in the contents page. So read it through carefully before submitting it, okay? Will do. And I made a few notes on the proposal about things which could have been better sequenced. Okay. As for the writing itself, I've annotated the proposal as and where I thought it could be improved. Generally speaking, I feel you've often used complex structures and long sentences for the sake of it, and as a consequence, although your paragraphing and inclusion of subheadings help, it's quite hard to follow your train of thought at times. Oh. So, cut them down a bit, can you? Really? Yes, and don't forget simple formatting like numbering. Didn't I use page numbers? I didn't mean that. Look, you've remembered to include headers and footers, which is good, but listing ideas clearly is important. Number them or use bullet points, which is even clearer. Then you'll focus the reader on your main points. I thought your suggestion to go to the Navajo Tribal Park was a very good idea. Yeah, oh, I've always wanted to go there. My father was a great fan of cowboy films and the Wild West, so I was subjected to seeing all the epics, <laughs> many of which were shot there. As a consequence, it feels very familiar to me, and it's awesome, both geographically and visually. So it's somewhere I've always wanted to visit. The subsequent research I did and the online photographs made me even keener. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. and answer questions 25 to 30. Interesting. Right, let's look at the content of your proposal now. Did you find it comprehensive enough? Well, yes and no. You've listed several different topics on your contents page, but I'm not sure they're all relevant. No? Well, I thought that from the perspective of a field trip, one thing I needed to focus on was the sandstone plateau and cliffs themselves. The way they tower up from the flat landscape is just amazing. The fact that the surrounding softer rocks were eroded by wind and rain, leaving these huge outcrops high above the plain. It's hardly surprising that tourists flock to see the area. 
Well, yes, I'd agree with including those points. And then the fact that it's been home to Native American Navajos and all the social history that goes with that. The hardships they endured trying to save their territory from the invading settlers. Their culture is so rich. All those wonderful stories. Well, I agree it's interesting, but it's not immediately relevant to your proposal, Sandra. So, at this stage, I suggest you focus on other considerations. I think an indication of what the students on the trip could actually do when they get there should be far more central. So that certainly needs to be included and to be expanded upon. And I'd like to see something about the local wildlife and vegetation, too. Not that I imagine there's much to see. Presumably the tourist invasion hasn't helped. Okay, <clears throat> I'll do some work on those two areas as well. Uh, but you're right, there's not much apart from some very shallow rooted species. Although it's cold and snowy there in the winter, the earth is baked so hard in the summer sun that rainwater can't penetrate. Mm -hmm. So it's a case of flood or drought, really. So I understand. Now, before we look at everything in more detail, I've got a few factual questions for you. It would be a good idea to include the answers in your finished proposal, because they're missing from your draft. Fine. So, you mentioned the monoliths and the spires, which was good. But what area does the tribal park cover? Do you know? 12,000 hectares. And the plain is at about 5,850 meters above sea level. Mm, larger than I expected. Okay. Where's the nearest accommodation? That's a practical detail that you haven't included. Have you done any research on that? Yes. There's nowhere to stay in the park itself, but there's an old trading post called Goulding, quite near. All kinds of tours start from Goulding, too. What kind of tours? Well, the most popular are in four-wheel drive jeeps, but I wouldn't recommend hiring those. I think the best way to appreciate the area would be to hire horses instead and trek around on those. Biking is not allowed, and it's impossible to drive around the area in private vehicles. The tracks are too rough. Okay. Lastly, what else is worth visiting there? There are several caves, but I haven't looked into any details. I'll find out about them. Okay, good. Now what I'd like to know is... Okay, now moving to the part four. That is the oh, end of section, section four. three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 4 or section 4. Okay, this time we have half a minute. Uh, instead of uh, like looking at the answers for half a minute, we are moving, going to move to the next part. Next section part is four. part 4. You will hear a lecturer's introduction to a geography module. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. एंड के साथ अगर आपकी ब्लैंक आ जाए तो मिस नहीं होनी चाहिए अगेन एंड के साथ ब्लैंक है मिस नहीं होनी चाहिए फिर एंड के साथ ब्लैंक है मिस नहीं होनी चाहिए और ये फिर देखें इट्स अ ब्लैंक विद एंड एंड के साथ ब्लैंक हो तो बड़े इजीली आप पिक कर सकते हैं इसमें कोई मुश्किल नहीं होती तो ये आपकी मिस्टेक नहीं होनी चाहिए बिल्कुल प्रॉपरली आप इजीली पिक कर सकते हैं यहां पे देखें ऑन द डैश ऑफ द अर्थ यहां पे तुक्के में सरफेस ऑफ द अर्थ भी हो सकता है द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ द डिफरेंट प्रोसेस द डायनामिक बिटवीन डैश एंड पॉपुलेशन अब पॉपुलेशन आबादी होती है आबादी का तल्लुक इसके साथ होता है हैबिटेट के साथ हो सकता है दैन टू मेन ब्रांचेज ऑफ स्टडी लाइफ स्टाइल एंड देयर ये नहीं पता क्या है और हिस्टोरिकल एंड डैश जोग्राफी टाइप ऑफ जोग्राफी एंड दैन की वर्ड्स We'll begin with some basics. Firstly, what do we learn by studying geography? Well, we learn a great deal about all the processes that have affected and that continue to affect the Earth's surface. But we learn far more than that, because studying geography also informs us about the different kinds of relationships that develop between a particular environment and the people that live there. 
Okay, we like to think of geography as having two main branches. There's the study of the nature of our planet. Okay, <clears throat> थोड़ा से इसको बैक करते हैं. Welcome to your introductory geography lecture. We'll begin with some basics. Firstly, what do we learn by studying geography? Well, we learn a great deal about all the processes that have affected and that continue to affect the Earth's surface. But we learn far more than that, because studying geography also informs us about the different kinds of relationships that develop between a particular environment and the people that live there. Okay, we like to think of geography as having two main branches. There's the study of the nature of our planet, its physical features, what it actually looks like. And then there's the study of the ways in which we choose to live and of the impact of those on our planet. Our current use of carbon fuels is a good example of that. But there are more specific study areas to consider too, and we'll be looking at each of these in turn throughout the semester. These include biophysical geography, by which I mean the study of the natural environment and all its living things. Then there's topography. That looks at the shapes of the land and oceans. There's the study of political geography and social geography too, of course, which is the study of communities of people. We have economic geography, in which we examine all kinds of resources and their use, agriculture, for example. Next comes historical geography. The understanding of how people and their environments and the ways they interact have changed over a period of time. And urban geography, an aspect I'm particularly interested in, which takes as its focus the location of cities, the services that those cities provide, and migration of people to and from such cities. And lastly, we have cartography. That's the art and science of map making. You'll be doing a lot of that. So, to summarize before we continue, we now have our key answer. Studying this subject is important because without geographical knowledge, we would know very little about our surroundings and we wouldn't be able to identify all the problems that relate to them. So, by definition, we wouldn't be in an informed position to work out how to solve any of them. Okay, now for some practicalities. What do geographers actually do? Well, we collect data to begin with. You'll be doing a lot of that on your first field trip. How do we do this? There are several means. We might, for example, conduct a census, count a population in a given area, perhaps. We also need images of the Earth's surface, which we can produce by means of computer generation technology or with the help of satellite relays. We've come a very long way from the early exploration of the world by sailing ships, when geographers only had pens and paper at their disposal. After we've gathered our information, we must analyze it. We need to look for patterns, most commonly those of causes and consequences. This kind of information helps us to predict and resolve problems that could affect the world we live in. But we don't keep all this information confidential. We then need to publish our findings so that other people can access it and be informed by it. And one way in which this information can be published is in the form of maps. You'll all have used one at some stage of your life already. Let's consider the benefits of maps from a geographer's perspective. Maps can be folded and put in a pocket and can provide a great store of reference when they're collected into an atlas. They can depict the physical features of the entire planet if necessary, or just a small part of it in much greater detail. But there is a drawback. You can't exactly replicate something that is three-dimensional, like our planet, on a flat piece of paper, because paper has only two dimensions. And that means there'll always be a certain degree of distortion on a map. It can't be avoided. We can also use aerial photographs, pictures taken by cameras at high altitude above the Earth. These are great for showing all kinds of geographical features that are not easy to see from the ground. 
You can easily illustrate areas of diseased trees or how much traffic is on the roads at a given time or information about deep seabeds, for example. Then there are Landsats. These are satellites that circle the Earth and transmit visual information to computers at receiving stations. They circle the Earth several times a day and can provide a massive information. You'll all be familiar with the information they give us about the weather, for example. So, what we're going to do now is look at a short presentation in which you'll see all these... Okay, this is the end of your listening part 4. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You have to move to the next one. Okay, we will go back to the next one. Okay, these are the answers. And the next one is the next one. आप जब भी प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट करते हैं तो आप हमारे जो वीडियोस हैं स्टडी आइट्स लिस्टिंग पे उस पर कमेंट्स करें आपका क्या स्कोर आया कमेंट्स योर स्कोर एंड वी विल लेट यू योर बैंड कितना आपका बैंड है वो हम आपको बताएंगे ठीक है तो इस तरीके से हमने पूरी बुक को कलर पेज पे करके इसको इस तरीके से एक्सप्लेन किया हुआ है आप देख सकते हैं हम प्रैक्टिस कर सकते हैं प्रिपेयर कर सकते हैं और लिसनिंग को सॉल्व कैसे करना है वो सीखने के लिए मेरी सारी वीडियोज़ आप देखिएगा बिकॉज आई एम गो ना सॉल्व ऑल द लिसनिंग फ्राम बुक एट टू सिक्सटीन ठीक है अपना ख्याल रखिएगा हमारे साथ रहिएगा अगर आप नए हैं हमारे चैनल पर सब्सक्राइब जरूर कीजिएगा विशाल विशी हैप्पी स्टडी टेक केयर अल्लाह हाफिज़